I think the wind is still blowing, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I have sea legs. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Master. Let's see, one of these is a Bible. <laughs> Would you grab your swords, please? Yes. Whew. God is good all the time, isn't he? In Romans 14, would you go there for a moment, please? Romans 14. Glory. What a time to be alive. You know why? Because we're going to see the reward of the wicked. Hallelujah. In Romans 14. Now, there is a place where living in the Spirit is. It's not about goosebumps. Hello? It's not about emotion. Living in the Spirit first starts off with an exchange of breath because the Spirit of God is breath. That's why to enter the kingdom of God, you start exchanging breath. Why? Because when you repent for your sins, you are an exchanging breath. As you repent, that activates the blood of Christ, which allows the Spirit to have access. Without repentance, the Spirit has no access. The blood does always go first. But it's activated by breath because it's a ministry of breath. So to live in the Spirit, you must be filled with the Spirit. And that can only start by an exchange of breath. That's why when we praise and worship, there's an exchange of breath. Your breath for His. It's a constant Living in the Spirit, you know, many people think, well, living in the Spirit, it doesn't mean you're granola, nutty and fruity. See, living in the Spirit is a total different thing. You can live in the Spirit. It doesn't make you perfect. But it gives you wisdom and discernment. Living in the Spirit. It doesn't mean that you won't make a mistake. But mistakes are used for training. See, living in the Spirit, everything is working to the good. And in Romans 14, verse 16, would you speak it with me, please? Why? Because we're going to exchange breath. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's in Christ. So living in the Spirit, there is fruits of righteousness and peace and joy. That's the fruit of living in the Spirit. Does everybody get it? Living in a spirit puts things in divine order. Your priorities are different than the world's. Again, living in a spirit brings you more wisdom and discernment. You're more sensitive. You desire more of the presence of God. You are no living, you're no longer living for you. You're overwhelmed with his love. Again, it starts with an exchange of what? Breath. Breath. In 2 Corinthians 5. It 
Some people think living in the spirit is some kind of a magical thing, and it's not. Hello. Living in the spirit is a choice. You choose to cooperate with the spirit to live in the spirit. That's the only way you can do it. If you're not cooperating with the spirit, then you can't live in the spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12. And we will speak it together. Is everybody there? For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast, to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for what? For themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. That is living in the spirit. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Why? Because they're not living in the Spirit. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know Him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Living in the Spirit is always putting old things behind. You're always walking in something new, not old anymore. Things are becoming new. You see better. You hear better. You discern better. You have more wisdom. You love more. Things are becoming new. Those things that used to hinder you, irritate you, you have dominion over now. Does everybody understand? Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So living in the spirit now, you have a desire to reconcile people to Christ I mean, and to God. Amen. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were what? Pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In Christ is living in the spirit. It's living in the anointing. You know, in this we are representatives of the truth to reconcile man to their creator. Living in the Spirit, that is one of your desires. Your desires have changed living in the Spirit. You're no longer, again, living for yourself. You are a new creation only living in the Spirit. Old things are gone away. They're being released from you so that new things, according to His time and requirements, will be fulfilled. Regarding no one anymore that lives in the flesh, even Christians that so call themselves Christians, if they're still living in the flesh, we don't regard them. Regarding that, not regarding doesn't mean that, you know, you just ditch them, you know. It means that you can't take for what they say to be honest and true. You just can't. If they're in the flesh, they're going to be influenced by who? The enemy. So you can't take their word as to be true if they're in the flesh. And Romans 8, verse 1. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 1. 
there is what? Therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So living in the Spirit, there's no condemnation. But if you call yourself a Christian and you're living in the flesh, there's condemnation. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it, it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. That word might means your cooperation. In us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds, their desires, their thoughts on the things of the flesh. They're in always in a survival mode, not surrender. Only living in the Spirit is constant surrender. You're no longer fighting for yourself anymore. You are surrendered to Him knowing that He fights for you. You don't have to. The only thing you're fighting for is His presence. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds and thoughts and desires on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. So there is a righteous requirement which is fulfilled only to those, only those living in the Spirit can fulfill that righteous requirement. Amen? Living in the Spirit. What happens is when you are living in the Spirit, your thoughts are reset. Your desires are reset. Everything is heaven bound. It doesn't mean you can't function here. It doesn't mean you don't go to your work. But you're always putting Christ there. You know you're not alone. You know the angels are around you. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 16. Let's speak it. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding in those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind or thoughts, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Living in the Spirit, there is always increase. There isn't decrease. The only thing that decreases is you. Verse 20, therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence in the flesh. In other words, there's a lot of ritualistic religious things that go on in people's lives. But everything is about living in the Spirit. Everything. Everything revolves around the tabernacle and the seven feasts of the Lord. Living in the Spirit will connect everything. When you're not living in the Spirit, things are not connected. Romans 6. See, increase is established in the Spirit. It is a life. Now, there's something about living in the Spirit. It is a life of a higher standard. Everyone say a life of a higher standard. It doesn't make you better. Does everybody understand? It doesn't make you prideful. It should make you more humble. Living in the Spirit brings humbleness, not pride. But you have a higher standard of keeping clean and pure. 
You have a higher standard of not touching things that are offensive to God. You have a higher standard of things you speak, the things you think, the things you agree with, the things you disagree with. There is a higher standard. You don't run to nothing except for Him. Your higher standard is to wait on all things. Why? Because you know He is, does far above all you could ever ask or think. His word now is you. Does everybody understand it? You are now the living word expressed through the spirit of God by living in the spirit. Would I say to go Romans 6? Oh, good. Everybody okay? Verse 1, Romans 6, verse 1. Let's speak. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in the sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the what? Newness of life. The newness of life is living in the Spirit. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead. It's a good day to die. Indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin, the presence of evil, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and its lusts. And do not present your members as the instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you are under grace. See, living in the Spirit, there is no dominion against you. Your dominion is against everything else. Sin cannot reign. It cannot have dominion. Not at all. Living in the Spirit separates you from all sin, from all flesh from anything that has any influence to contaminate you. Does everybody understand? Why? Because you have more wisdom now and you have more understanding. You have more discernment. You are more sensitive to these things. You know things to come. When you make a move, there's a sense of what's ha getting ready to happen. Before you even make that decision, you understand the end result. This is living in the Spirit. Is everybody okay? We should want to live in the Spirit. It's a choice of living in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The plan of escape is only in living in the Spirit. So that means grace, which is the plan of escape, can only be manifested if you're living in the Spirit. Does everybody get it? Because you're not going to obey the commands of God without living in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Colossians 3. The first step of living in the Spirit is the exchange of your breath for His. Amen? <laughs> so the more you exchange your breath... Guess what happens? The 
more the Spirit is, and the more opportunity you have of living in the Spirit. See, one of the things the enemy tries to do is provoke you to contaminate. If you sow contamination, you reap contamination. Whatever you sow, you what? Reap. You know, so many people start over and over and over. They're always starting over. They're in a cycle. They go do good, then they contaminate. Then they cycle over, cycle over. You know, when you break covenant with God, you lose every, all your treasures. That's when you break covenant with God. But think, there are things that you can contaminate yourself without breaking covenant. Amen? Especially out of your mouth. Those are the things that will contaminate you. You can, can defile you. And then you start all over again. Don't you get tired of starting all over again? Hallelujah. Colossians 3 verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts, and your desires on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. I'm going to say that again. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So when the devil tries to kill you, he can't. Why? Because you're already dead. Let's go. Verse 4. For when Christ, who is our life, appears, Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is it all and what? And in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another. That means putting up with each other and forgiving one another. If any. <laughs> If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you should also do the same thing. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Again, put off. It takes power to put off the old man. Amen? You must cooperate with the Spirit. And again, living in the Spirit gives you the power of dominion. You are able to put off. Once the old man starts to bark up, you knock him down. He doesn't get so far without you saying no. Does everybody get it? He can't arise. He can try and perk up his head. He tries to let out a verb. <laughs> Smack him. Put your foot on his head. Stick a sock in his mouth. You do whatever you got to do to shut the old man up. Does everybody understand? You have dominion. Living in the spirit. See, people don't take their dominion. They just think and then do something. They hear the voice of the stranger, the voice of the old man, and they just go and contaminate themselves. And everybody around them. Hallelujah. Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Living in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. Glory. Verse 16. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? 
I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things cannot inherit the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're in the flesh. No flesh can enter the kingdom of God. But, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against their, such there's no law. And those who are Christ, who are living in the Spirit, have crucified the old man or the flesh with its passion and its desires, taken dominion. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Why? Because it will bring contamination. And where there's contamination, there is no victory. Hello. So we must maintain a walk in living in the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Second Corinthians three verse twelve. Again, living in the spirit does not make you perfect, but it gives you more wisdom and discerning. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians three twelve. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the, at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. In other words, the veil is taken away by living in the Spirit. It will not come back on you unless contamination comes. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil what? Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip this? Verse 14. I want to say that again. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because a veil is taken away in Christ and being and living in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty or freedom. Look, at living in the Spirit is freedom. It's a constant maintaining of deliverance. It's freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just by the Spirit of the Lord. Freedom only is in the Spirit. That's it. There is no other freedom. It's nothing but management. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, verse 1. Living in the Spirit. Oh, what foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? 
This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the Lord or by the hearing of faith? Are you so stupid? Are you so foolish? <laughs> Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? This is called backsliding. People will not even know that they've walked out of the Spirit and are in the flesh. See, the enemy, listen, there are so many signs, there are boundaries that are around me and you that keep us living in the Spirit. It's like, you know when you walk out of your house, the world is out there. There's a different world in your house. At least I hope there is. If it's not, you need to get rid of everything. <laughs> All those spirits, cursed items, things of that degree, you know? But again, living in the Spirit, there are set boundaries, and you are sensitive to the alarms of those boundaries. You're very sensitive to them. Do you ever see the, uh, those, like those electric little wire fences? They, you know, you have people put in their yards for their dog. They put a little car over on the dog. And he knows when he gets close and it, <laughs> don't go near there. Well, we have a warning sign by the Holy Spirit. Some of us do need a collar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's some people who really need a collar to <laughs> prevent them from <laughs> Going over the boundaries. About 10,000 volts ought to do it, you know. <laughs> but uh, in that, if you're living in the Spirit, you're sensitive. You're sensitive to those boundaries. Um, you already know. There is a knowing that you know that you know. That you say, this is okay and this is not. This is clean, that's unclean. This is pleasing to God. This is not pleasing to God. You know there's a sensitive in that spirit that you know you are obedient or disobedient. You know that you're looking for self-fulfillment or fulfillment of Him. You know. See, you're not there to justify. Living in the spirit exposes all justification. See, but the enemy will try to contaminate contaminate you with a justification. That brings what? Compromise. That compromise will contaminate you. It will move you right out of living in the Spirit and you won't even know it until things begin to escalate. And as they begin to escalate, more frustration, more confusion, Bitterness. Next thing you know, you're criticizing. Then there's doubt, fear. All of these other things begin to escalate more and more and more. And that's where God does not want us to be. Those are areas where you're sensitive. And again, they're like layers of contamination. So if you get to the first layer of contamination... God willing, hopefully, through prayer, you're going to find this out and step right out of it and get back to living back in the Spirit. You know, you will know things by your own desires. Are your desires interrupting God? Are your desires pleasing God? Choices that you make. All of these things you will be so sensitive to that you will not want to displease God at all because there is a love affair that's happening between you two. Hallelujah. Bewitched. Have you been bewitched? That means influenced by witchcraft. Amen. It's trickery. It's deceiving. That's the enemy does. He tries to deceive you to contaminate you. Thank you, Master. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Let's speak it. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fatility of their thoughts or minds, having their understanding what? 
darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ. You've not learned living in the Spirit. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts, <clears throat> that you put on the what? New man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In other words, living in the spirit takes practice. You're going to learn to live in the Spirit. You'll become more sensitive. The more you exchange breath, the more you have access. That's why it's important. We just did a teaching on the meeting place. Amen? Well, the meeting place is the place where you are in the Spirit. And that's where exchanges are made. The more that there's a meeting place with God, the more exchanges are made the more is living in the Spirit. So even during a day, you're praising God. You're constantly exchanging breath. Thank you, Lord. I love you. You're awesome. You're constantly exchanging breath. See, communication with God is an exchange of breath all the time. He who sows to the Spirit reaps what? Life. Life. Is everybody Okay. Oh, glory, go to 2 Corinthians 11. A higher standard. Verse 12, 2 Corinthians eleven twelve. 12. Let's speak it for, but what I do I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are what? As are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into a what? An angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me a fool, that I also boast a little. In other words, Paul was exposing these false prophets. Many are deceived by familiar spirits, doctrines of demons, false miracles, and witchcraft. Alcohol, drugs, all of these things is a part of witchcraft. You know, one of the things that the world is trying to do is get people hooked on medications. It's witchcraft, pharmacia, black magic, witch, witchcraft, and sorcery. It's amazing, and how, I mean, they're trying to get kids on Ritalin, and, and I mean, it's just incredible to me. And, you know, God says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. So the parents don't know about this. They, oh, let's, I mean, you know, that's why it's so good to have spirit-filled parents, man. It's essential. I didn't have spirit-filled parents. I had to go through hell to get to heaven. I didn't have to be medicated. I was self-medicated. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was Jesus that delivered me. Praise be to God. But in that process, there was training. In that process, there was dying. But I finally got to a point where it's like, you know what? I can't live this way no longer. I would rather die than continue this life. And when those words and that desire came out of my mouth, God moved. See, we're always trying to fix ourselves, and we can't. 
Amen. The only thing we can do is cooperate with the fixer. When we cooperate with him, man, we get fixed up. Heck, we become his trophies. Not in pride or arrogance, but in humility. <laughs> Praise God. So we know that many people are being deceived. I mean, you can see all over the world right now. Many deceived by familiar spirits, doctrines of demons, false miracles, and witchcraft. 2 Corinthians 6. Verse 11. I go to verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. What does it say? Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Belial with uh, Christ with Belial or a part has a believer with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. If they do what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you, I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Was he saying, come out from the... Come out from living in the worldly ways into the ways of the Spirit. Come out from that. 2 Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though I, we walk, what, in the flesh, we are not, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is a memory lied. In other words, these are spiritual weapons. Casting down what? Arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. <coughs> and where are these arguments? Bringing what? Every thought of the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. These are weapons of the spirit. Knowing that the influence of the mind must be contained, controlled, and not become contaminated. Anything that is associated with it must be removed. Desires. Speak. Speak to the mind. Everything starts associated with the heart. Goes to the mind, then to the mouth. You know, the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful. That's why we need a heart exchange every day also. Your heart is the core of all desire. The enemy influences us with desire. Emotion. See, when you are living in the spirit, emotion no longer has dominion over you. You're not making emotional decisions or choices. You're making decisions according to what the Spirit is telling or leading. It's different. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. In verse 1. Hallelujah. Just speak it there. Where, uh, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask. I'll miss that you may spend it on your flesh or your desires, your pleasures. Adulterers and, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? That means if you're acting like the world, you're an enemy of God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace 
Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Listen, living in the spirit is a life of resistance. It is a life of resistance. You are constantly living a resistant life to the powers of darkness. Living in the spirit is always in there. You are focused on Christ. And you are always resisting the enemy's influence. It is a life of resistance. Does everybody get it? Living in the Spirit is not only a life of resistance, it's a life of submission. Remember, it doesn't make us perfect. It makes us wise and discerning. 1 Peter chapter 5, and one more scripture. First Peter five verse six. Glory. First Peter five verse six, let's speak it. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Living in the spirit does not it keeps you in God's time. What the enemy always likes to do is promote anxiousness. It cannot penetrate. Verse 8. Be what? Sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What does it say? Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by who? Your brotherhood in the world. Everybody goes through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Again, living in the Spirit is a life of resistance, a life of submission. It doesn't make us perfect. It makes us wise and discerning. We are more sensitive puts us in a place of a higher standard. And I'm going to close at Isaiah 11. These are the seven attributes of living in the Spirit. One, verses 1 and 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 2, these are the seven attributes. The Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him who shall be upon us. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of what? Counsel and might, which means strength. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Living in the Spirit is always the fear of the Lord. There's always a reverence to God because living in the Spirit, there's a reverence of living in the Spirit. These are the seven attributes of living in the Spirit. Also in this area where it says might, it's also associated with boldness. So there's strength and boldness. You're no longer a coward. You're an exposer. Again, if you're already dead, you don't have to be concerned about being killed. You're no longer fighting for your life. You're fighting for the life of Christ. You're on a mission, a military operation. Living in the Spirit is no longer associated with living according to the ways of the world. Amen? It's totally different. Set, set boundaries. You know, again, you can ask the Lord, Lord, set, what, what, set my boundaries. What are they? Allow me to be more sensitive to those boundaries. Slap me in the back of the head. Whatever you got to do. But don't let me step over those things. Keep me sensitive, discerning. 
Keep me in that place where I can meet you every single day where there's an exchange made. Allow me to exchange that breath, my breath, for your breath every single day. That's what prayer does. Amen? So the more there's an exchange, the more we change. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the refreshing and renewing. And we thank you for the meeting place and learning to live in the Spirit, that your name will be glorified and that the world will see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.